I will come back uh, Physic 210 <coughs> I will continue on with uh, uh, Subchapter 1.3 That one will be Angular Momentum Okay, first we have to define uh, The Angular Momentum So the Angular Momentum, the symbol is L And it is a vector quantity So our Angular Momentum is defined to be the cross product of the displacement okay, from the center of rotation I call this one R with the linear momentum of the object that one will be P okay so our angular momentum L is equal to R cross P so that R cross P so if we have a diagram to look at what happened there so let's assume that there is a circular motion object this is a center of rotation and this one is the R the direction is OP let's say the object is here location P so it has a mass M okay, it has a mass M and it moves with a tangential velocity of V and this one is 90 degree right so the angle between the momentum which is in that direction and the vector R this is our unit vector R okay? sorry the vector R the displacement R and the momentum is in the other direction uh, I think I changed the symbol for location P I changed that one to something A because P later will be used as a symbol for linear momentum so since the angle between the R and the V here is 90 degree so that one uh, we don't have problem with the function of the sine so if we look at the formula here our angular momentum is RP sine theta but since the theta is 90 degrees, so we only have RP. So that one is because your sine theta is equal to 1. Why? Because this one is perpendicular to each other. 90 degree. Okay. So that is our first formula. L equal to RP. But our L is also equal to R. P is equal to MV. So that means L is equal to MV. R. Uh, that one is one of our formula to calculate the linear, uh, sorry, angular momentum. But in this chapter, everything is uh, rotational, so we are going to find another formula for angular property. So now we start from here. Okay, we start from this one. From L is equal to MVR, we know that our V is actually equal to R omega, right? So you put this one together, it becomes mr square omega. But we also know the property of mr square, that one has something to do with moment of inertia, i omega. Okay, so that is also the formula that we can use to calculate angular momentum if you are given, okay, if you are given the i and the omega value. Now, uh, Physicists discover that this angular momentum, okay, this uh, angular momentum is uh, is a constant. Okay, this whole value is a constant. If you don't change the shape of the object, okay, if you do don't change the moment inertia of the object, so that one is uh, a constant. So based on uh, conservation, okay, conservation of angular momentum stated that stated that in an isolated system okay, in an isolated system the angular momentum is a constant okay so that means anything happen during that rotation the initial angular momentum 
must equal to the final angular momentum. So that one also follow from here that our I omega initial must equal to the I omega for the final value. That one is important. Okay, that one is important. Uh, we use a lot of this concept in a further physics uh, application for this uh, law of conservation of angular momentum. Alright, so it says that if you look at these things uh, carefully, let's say something rotate. Okay, something rotate. Okay, you have uh, something that is rotating. For example, this is a rotating okay protractor. Now, let's say okay if you maintain the mass of this angular uh, this object. Okay, maintain the mass so the mass does not change. So what happened is let's say it started to uh, rotate with a what we call that uh, small uh, omega i okay? omega i value and then it has an initial i value okay i i this one and omega i now let's say if you make the diameter become smaller when the diameter shrink so let's assume this one change will become smaller one okay but the mass stay the same thickness the same assume so that means your omega the i value will change the i value uh, i value will reduce when the i value reduces the omega will increase okay so if you are uh, you observe uh, the, the the ice skating okay the ice skating competition you can see that when uh, when a dancer on the ice they are spinning okay they are spinning they will become faster okay they will become faster when they pull in their hands okay their arms and their hand to their chest to their chest so what happened is when they pull that one in uh their i value reduces so when the i value reduces their omega increase because this whole thing is a constant so something decrease another thing must increase so that they maintain the same value all right so to slow that spinning down they slowly pull uh push their hand out okay push their hand out and one of the leg might be pushing out also so that they will spin slower so that is uh, what happened during ice skating competition okay ice skating all right so you see sometimes when you talk about sport sport also if you understand the law of the physics you can become a very good athlete all right okay so this is our angular momentum uh, and also the conservation now since you already understand uh, we already have the value for this formula here now the next concept here that we need to look at is rotational kinetic energy 1.4 okay rotational kinetic energy okay rotational kinetic energy uh, is a kinetic energy possessed by something that is rotating okay something that is rotating so let's assume an object okay let's assume an object with a moment initial i okay with a moment initial i uh let's say it rotate with omega okay rotate with omega so let's assume again the moment inertia of this uh, object is i now since it is rotating so we have rotational kinetic energy normally uh, we use uh, er is equal to half i omega square now if you observe this equation carefully what do you see you see that for a linear Okay, for a linear kinetic energy, object that move with a mass m move in the velocity in straight line, the kinetic energy is half mv square. Now, if you compare side by side, you realize that they have the same format. Half is uh, not a problem. Mass, this one is moving in linear linear speed. Now, everything rotate, the mass become the angular, uh, what we call that the moment inertia, and the linear velocity become angular velocity. So you see, it's very easy to remember. Don't tell me until now you still cannot remember this formula. So if you remember this formula, then it's very easy to remember the formula for rotational kinetic energy. Okay. Now, why is this kinetic energy important? It is important because things rotate, like your car tire, okay, uh, motor, okay, fans, aircon, everything that have rotating parts. This thing is very important. Okay. So that means it depends on two things here how fast you are spinning and then what is the size of the eye the moment of inertia all right so that is our rotational kinetic energy 
Now, we are going to use this one in our 1.5 here, okay? So our 1.5 uh, is uh, the conservation of energy, okay? Conservation of energy. Now, what energy are we talking about here? Conservation of uh, energy that involve two types of kinetic energy and also potential energy. Conservation of energy, okay, uh, in translational and rotational motion. Okay, rotational motion. Now, of course, uh, later I put in bracket. Uh, this one includes, okay, potential energy. This potential energy normally refer to gravitational, okay, gravitational potential energy. Okay, gravitational potential energy. So, uh, that conservation of energy stated that the or every conservation energy state this the total energy initially must equal to the total energy after something happened okay so this energy here includes all this energy translational kinetic and also rotational kinetic and plus gravitational potential energy so initially if it has uh this much gravitational potential energy plus this much kinetic energy and plus this much rotational kinetic energy after a certain thing happen the total energy must also the same even though they can change from each other among each other but the total must be the same so the final kinetic energy linear plus the final rotational kinetic energy that is the conservation of okay this uh, law here all right now of course in horizontal okay in horizontal uh, motion then because uh, gravity does not change or when you move horizontally right? there's no work done against gravity so your u1 ui is equal to uf so under horizontal motion you only have this one which is equal to EKF plus ERF. Uh, that one is a special case. So you have to know uh, the general case, which is more important because from general case, you can actually go to special case. So this one is special case. I put this one a special case. And this one is a general case. Okay, general case. So normally we want students to know the general condition rather than the special condition okay but you need to know when to use general and when to use special case so that you don't waste time writing down such a bulky equation here okay so that is our 1.5 so that is our chapter one we finish our chapter one for all this okay and then i'll see you in the tutorial again all right bye